Spring season is almost here, and I wanted to hurry and get my recommended video out. Obviously, I won't be able to tell you how good the animation in the series is or discuss cool Sakuga outside of what's in the trailer. But as someone who is currently reading over 600 manga and light novels, I can tell you which series will have the best stories. Now, these are the series that have caught my eye. I've read almost all of the source material for them, but ones that are new to me, I'll let you know. Welcome once again to Musings by Danan. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Danan, and my two favorite genres are fantasy and romance. So on this channel, we talk a lot about both of those genres, which brings me to today's topic, Spring 2024 Anime. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel, and it's free. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. First of all, let's get sequels out of the way. To start, Konosuba, God's Blessing on this Wonderful World. Of course I'm going to watch this one. It's the Thief arc. No spoilers, but those who know, know. In previous seasons, certain side characters played a bigger role, like Wiz becoming more important in Season 2 than she was in Season 1. Well, in this season, Chris plays an important role. And no, I won't tell you what it is. You'll have to see it for yourself. If you haven't watched Konosuba, then get started. You've got a couple weeks before Season 3 comes out. If you're wanting a comedy isekai that is basically a sitcom in another world, with a party of idiots somehow surviving, defeating monsters in the most hilarious ways possible, you should check this series out. Next up, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Season 3. This one will be airing for the next six months, so buckle up. We're dealing with the aftermath of Rimuru becoming a demon lord. That's all I'm gonna say. At this point, you either know about this series or you don't, so there's not much point in talking about it. Unless I get a ton of comments down below asking me to explain the series, of course. Next up is My Hero Academia Season 7. Yes, this series is still going, and this one promises to be the darkest of the bunch. Believe it or not, I am anime only for this series, and I still enjoy watching it. Not for me so much as for my kid. My child, who is currently going through what they have dubbed their frat boy phase, grew up on My Hero. They are 18 as of this video, but they were 10 when season 1 aired. I want you to think back to the shows you were watching at age 10, and ruminate on how influential they were to you, and how much you love them due to nostalgia. So I, for one, am more excited about this series than Demon Slayer. Next up, continuing one of the greatest isekai series of all time, we've got the second core of Mushoku Tensei Season 2. I know a lot of people hate on this series, but I don't care. Haters gonna hate, and popular doesn't necessarily mean good. A redemption story requires the main character to be a garbage human being to start. If last season was kind of boring for you, and had too much plot, don't worry. This one is almost entirely violent, so look forward to it. I know I am. Sometimes, there are production issues. These can lead to scheduling issues, but some anime are worth waiting for. After all, better late than bad. The Misfit of Demon King Academy Season 2 will be airing this season. For those who haven't watched, this series is overpowered, done right. The main character died a thousand years ago in order to save the world and keep humans and demons separate. He is reborn into the chattest of chads. Name another character who kisses the tsundere in two episodes. And quickly gains an enormous following. But someone has been manipulating both the memories of his people and history itself. So how's he meant to overcome that? Overwhelming power, of course. Finally, the last of our sequels this season that many Americans avoid, because they're prudes, is Irregular at Magic High School. I mean, yes, the main couple in this series are brother and sister, but who cares? It's a cartoon, people. Calm down. There is plenty to love about this series. After all, Miyuki murders her brother for looking at another woman. What? I thought you'd like the Yandere's. But seriously, this show has some great action scenes, terrific violence, and a complete sociopath as the main character. What's not to love? Spice and Wolf is getting remade. 
no one saw this coming. For those of you who never saw the original, our tale is about a traveling merchant who picks up a strange passenger. Only, the passenger is not human. She is Holo the Wise Wolf, a guardian deity who is no longer worshipped, so she decides to return home. And Craft Lawrence agrees to give her a ride north, so she can return. Eventually, after a lot of detours, and apples, this series is a cute, slow-burn romance with an odd couple as the main characters, more in common with the earlier episodes of Firion than the later ones. But just like Firion, Spice and Wolf has some epic scenes, but they are earned over time, so don't expect some amazing hook right off the bat. Okay, everyone should at least be moderately familiar with Monster Hunter. You kill monsters, then upgrade or make new weapons and armor using the remains of those monsters. This makes you stronger, which allows you to hunt stronger monsters. Repeat until you can kill God. Now, what if Monster Hunter were set in modern day Japan, and they were hunting Kaiju, and the captains of the various defense squads had armor and weapons crafted from the remains of Dai Kaiju, like Godzilla, Violante, or Ghidorah? Kaiju Number 8 is a manga that has been popular in Shonen Jump for years, and we are finally getting the anime adaptation this season. Our main character promised his childhood friend that they would avenge the deaths of her parents together. They would grow up strong and hunt Kaiju as part of the defense force. Only, he didn't make the cut. Meanwhile, she's now a captain. She's a hero. She's on billboards and is worshipped by everyone, both civilians and members of the defense force alike. But Kafka is part of the kaiju cleanup crew, with no chance of ever fulfilling his childhood dream. Until one night, a kaiju forces itself down his throat, transforming him into a kaiju. Can he control his new powers? Will this give him the strength to join the anti-kaiju defense force? If you need some mass destruction and crave monster violence, you should check out kaiju number 8. The next one is an isekai, but our main character gets snatched from one fantasy world and dropped down into another. So, he doesn't know the politics of this new world, but he is an experienced merchant, so at least he's got that going for him. The kingdom summons two heroes to save them from the demon army. One has amazingly high stats, but the other one is a normal dude. So, they send off the normal dude into the wilderness as an apology, but of course, they just want him to die. But, as is often the case in stories like this, the kingdom chose poorly. The hero they chose gained no powers as he leveled up. His stats remained unchanged as he defeated monsters. However, our main character becomes absurd after killing one slime and getting to level 2. As an example, he casts Purify, a spell that normally takes scores of clerics chanting together by himself and wipes out an entire army of demons. Now, chilling in another world with level 2 super cheap powers is a light-hearted romp. If Isekai isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. The thing that sets this one apart is that even though our main character gets surrounded by a host of women, it is not a harem. There is one wife, and she is best girl. The other girls aren't romantic interests at all. He just happens to pick them up and help them. The rest of the videos in this list are ones I've got my eye on, but haven't read the source material for. I've wanted to, I just haven't had the time. The first is titled Studio Apartment, Good Lighting, Angel Included. This is an adorable slice of life about a boy living on his own who suddenly has a roommate. But there's something a little bit off about her. Something almost divine? Next up, the banished former hero lives as he pleases is another isekai where the main character isn't from Japan. Additionally, he is labeled as failure because he doesn't have the goddess's blessing. Well, that's because the blessing of the goddess wouldn't do him much good because he still has his powers as a hero from his former life. But now, since he's been cut free from destiny, he gets to pull a Miles Morales and do his own thing. The new gate has been described as Sword Art Online, but good. Thousands of people were trapped inside the game, but were released when one legendary player, Shin, defeated the final boss. This allowed everyone to escape, but as it happened, 
he was enveloped in a flash of light and awakens 500 years later, still in the game. So everyone else was saved except for the hero who saved them. I still haven't read this one yet, but my little brother has, and I trust his judgment enough to at least watch the first few episodes. Finally, an anime that has one of my patrons salivating, An Archdemon's Dilemma, How to Love Your Elf Bride. Marcus adores this series. One day, a powerful sorcerer, Zagan, attends an auction. He's thinking he'll get his hands on some powerful artifacts or something to help his magical research. The lot? A white-haired elf girl. Zagan bankrupts himself to buy this girl because he fell in love with her at first sight. The only problem is he's a socially awkward nerd who doesn't know how to talk to people, much less express his feelings. This series is an awkward romance between an adorable elf girl and an awkward nerd of a wizard. I can't wait. Did I miss any shows that you're excited for? Which ones? Leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Dana. There are several tiers to choose from. You can pick an anime or manga for me to do a video about, or you can join our monthly manga club. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons, Waffles, Jiraiya, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Squishy, Brett, Roxy, Sean, Pob Zombie, Mark Borgie, Nasman, Pedro, Midge, Detroff, Alex, Alex, Julio, Michael, Valeri, Kanga, Ignis, RJ, and Jay. You guys are awesome. I post anime or manga videos often, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Damon.